All right, glory to God, we're back, all right? So, I will not leave you orphans. That's the first one. I will come to you, all right? So, seeing that we don't have the internet right now, just get your page and a pen, and we're going to have to find these scriptures together. And it would be really nice if somebody would help me. Um, if you got good internet connection. All right? So, Father. Father, we just pray that you'll have your way. That you would just do things like you always do, Daddy. Teach us like you always do. Abba Jesus, teach us like you always do. Because you're the teacher and we're the student, Lord God. We pray, Father, that... I'll not give my private interpretation or opinion, but to give the word as you give it. In your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Just get like a page. Or if you got the internet, then do the internet. I'm doing a page. Get a page. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you, all right? So these two, these two are in one. All right, so Father, have you read? All right, so we're going to, the first one is not one falls to the, this is the sparrow, yes. Not one falls to the ground without father's permission. That's the first thing I hear. The second thing is I knew those who are mine the next one I hear let the children come to me suffer them not I hear Unless one becomes like a child, he will not enter the kingdom. What's the other one? What's the other one? I lost. No, 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 we'll lose it. I lost it. He'll give it back. He always does. All right. Do not stand there, creepy. Come in. <laughs> Afternoon. <laughs> oh, darn. I lost that one. It was important just now. He'll give it back. All right, let the children come to me. Suffer them not unless he becomes like a child. He will not enter into heaven. Just a second. How must I be born again? Oh, I hear it. I hear he who loves his mother, father more than me is not worthy.
Un raja. I, I will not leave you. Oh, forsake you. Purchased heirs of salvation. Heirs of salvation. Power and authority. Power and authority I give unto you. Okay, here we go. Adoption. by the Spirit Hallelujah All right, more Where I'm going, you cannot come Yeah, okay where I am going, you cannot come. But it is expedient for me to go. Father, have your way, have your way. They were indeed, okay, they, I hear you, they were indeed sorrowful in their hearts. At his speaking, we're going further. I hear what you're I hear okay I hear what he's saying okay here we go teach no hearken wait teach hearken okay how do you spell hearken hear the words of your father incline your ear to my voice no, I came around. <laughs> How are you? Are you good? Awesome. I try not to get it. Yeah? I need to get antibiotics. I think I need antibiotics or, or just to pump up my immune system. No, I need to just pump up my immune system. I need to get into a lot of things. 
All right, love. All right. Where are we? Hear the, the words of your father. Incline your ear to my voice. Something about a mother not forgetting the child of her womb. Scripture page getting filled. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 14 scriptures so far. That's a lot. All right. Can we find it? We got to find it. <laughs> Please work. Just th there's no signal. All right. Ugh. The first one. Not one falls to the ground without father's permission. Go with me to Matthew somewhere. second I'll find it my heart is beating so fast what is going on I don't want to go through this because when I, like, remember the Holy Spirit has to align the word. So anybody, anybody there, anybody at all, I don't even see anybody or who's watching or nobody's watching. I don't know. Who's watching? Nobody? I'm looking for the first one. No, actually, the last one first. I'm looking for room.
I got a lot. I feel like just taking off this thing. G-H-I Well, this sucks This is not working And I'm not in the mood to fight with it right now All right, so we're looking in the first one. We're going bottom up, all right, bottoms up. Mm, sounds weird, but bottoms up, password. We're going into Isaiah. For our scripture, we're going into, where is it? We're going into Isaiah. Forty-nine, fifteen. Welcome back. Don't be a nuisance. Isaiah forty-nine, fifteen. Right, Isaiah 49, 15. Those, that's the scripture page, all right? That's what we got for the scripture page, and now we're going into, we're going to look at it. All right, so a mother cannot forget the child of her womb. Mm, I just do a little work. I cannot access my messages on this phone, okay? Only on the laptop, so it doesn't make sense messaging me on the inbox. Not right now, anyway. Give me a second. Let me just get myself in order. Ow, Peter. Sorry. <clears throat> Not working. You know you have those days where you just don't want to? Like, struggle with anything? Those are the days. They take our resources and then we got none for ourselves. That's smart. That's dumb. Getting a little bit upset now. All right. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you. Because I can't take any more stress right now.
More money, 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 money. All right, so first one we're going in is Isaiah 49. Verse 15. Please. No more delays, please. Isaiah 49 15. Yes, Lord. Father, be glorified as each scripture verse comes up. Hear the word of your Father. sorrowful in their hearts I just said don't message me on the inbox I cannot answer you it's just going to mess up the internet here please If you speak nice, they don't understand. When you shout, they like, okay, she's serious. Why is that? Where I'm going, you kind of come. And he'll just sit there and eat all of that. I don't understand. When, uh, well, that's why they shouldn't have complained when David came power and authority I give on to you I'm I'm right now I'm pulling up the scripture page purchase heirs of salvation While the internet's going, I'm just typing it in, all right? So bear with me right now. What was the last one? I will not leave you or forsake you. I will not leave you or forsake you. He who loves his mother... This is your scripture page right here. He who loves his mother. He must be born again. Unless one becomes like a child. Let the children come to me, suffer them not. All right, I hear you, Papa. Okay, here's what he says. He says, I will cast away none. I will cast away none that come to me. I'm typing when I'm not seeing the words. Where, what just happened? Patience is virtue, Carrie. Patience is virtue. Fire the Holy Spirit upon this thing. 
disconnect from blink and connect onto the Holy Spirit now in Jesus name not good I know those who are mine is frozen we were going really good hi Check this out. I'm trying to get my scripture page going before it uh, before the internet crashes down. All right, so just give me a second. I'm building my scripture page right now. The last one was I know those who are mine. Come on, come on. Fire the Holy Spirit upon this network now in Jesus' name. I bind every disconnection and a loose connection now in Jesus' name. All right, there we go. We're back. All right, what was the other one? I know those who are mine. And not one force to them without Father's permission. All right, so hallelujah. Whew, glory to God. I did a back for front, but um, we're starting bottom up, all right? So the first, the last one is first. So the last one is a mother kind of forget her child of the, her womb, the child of her womb. So what we're doing is I will not leave you orphans. Amen. And we're going into <laughs> it's all working. Yay. All right. So it's all working. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. All right, so the first one we're going in is a mother kind of forget the child of her womb. Go with me to Isaiah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. All right, glory to God, glory to God. The only thing that's missing right now is... Um... um music of course amen so let me just get that all right so a mother can't forget the child of her womb go me to isaiah 49 verse 15 reading verse what are we reading verse 14 to 16 i'm a little bit slow right now but i'll quicken up just give me a sec not feeling 100 percent, but i'm going all right <clears throat> Isaiah 49, 15, verse 14 to 16. But Zion said, who? Zion. Hallelujah. God's people. Listen to what it says. The Lord has forsaken me, and my Lord has forgotten me. Now, immediately as I read that, I hear in the Spirit, we don't know what has become of Moses. Okay, so we're going there. We don't know what has become of Moses. Not Mumsies. Moses. I just wrote Mumsies. It's kind of funny. Okay, we don't know what has become of Moses. All right, so this is where Moses went to speak to the Lord. And the people saw that he was missing. Now check this out why what what okay so you want me to speak about okay so just like jesus when he was here on the earth they could see him physically he was there with them physically he was there with them eating and drinking um walking with them teaching them showing them all the miracles and now 
something has happened. What has happened? Well, he's been crucified. He rose again to life. And now, guess what? He has to go back. What? All right, so he told me to go into what we don't know what has become of Moses. So which is Exodus 32, 23. I might take a, I'm just, just, just not snapping my hair today if it bothers me anymore. So, hmm, the first one, Exodus 32, verse 23. Go with me, really quickly. So the Lord had desired to give them something good, amen? And that would be the tablets of stone. So he called Moses up there to chat with him, you know, and, and, and give him that. So Exodus 32, verse 23, reading from 22 to 24. And Aaron said, let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Just a second. That, that's not right. Give me a second. We got to go up a little. We got to go up a notch. Exodus 32, but a little bit further, okay? We don't know what has become of Moses. All right. Exodus 32, verse 1. Ugh. I'm not going to move this thing one more time. All right, Exodus 32, verse 1. So we have to read verse 18 of Exodus 31. And he gave to, unto Moses when he made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai. Two tablets, or two tables of testimony, tablets of stone written with the very finger of God. Exodus 32, verse 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount. So stop a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. So first when they were in Egypt, they were doubting Moses, right? They were doubting that he was who he said he was and all of that. And then when he finally told him that God was going to free them, they, they started to follow him. They trusted him. And then... They're out in the wilderness. Now, Moses led them, right? He was a, a shadow of Christ. He was like a, a Christ that we were seeing or who Jesus would be or who he is, all right, the shepherd. So then we saw that um, he was a servant of the Lord. So whatever they lacked, they got, and whatever they needed, God taught them through him. Now, all this time, Moses... As soon as he, he started with the plagues and all of that, and the people saw that he really was a man of God, they, they started to follow him, all right? Now, just like when the disciples were doing their own thing, whatever life they were leading, and then Jesus said, come follow me, and they left everything, and they what? They followed him. He was with them. Now, Moses has gone up the mountain, and it would have been like the first time that he's been taken out of the sight of the people, or how to say, he's left them in the physical, all right, since he's been seen as a prophet. So, what happened? The people, they lost heart, right, because... The world around us is a physical world. It is a world that is temporal, but we can strangely um, understand or... What's that word I'm looking for? <laughs> um, you know what I mean? Understand the things that we can see, touch, smell, hear, and taste because we are also in the flesh, right? So it's easy it's easier for us to 
to comprehend what 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 it is than to not see something and have to believe it now this is why in hebrews god says they who come to him must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of they that seek him diligently can we go there I feel like I want to faint. And I feel sturdy. Okay, I'm spinning. They who come to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of they that seek him diligently. Hebrews. So we're coming back to Exodus 32. Let's go into Hebrews 11. I don't know the verse. We're going to go. He says Hebrew 11. Verse 6. Verse 6. Where's Hebrews gone to, huh? There we go. Hebrews 11, verse 6. But, okay, reading verse 5, because we have to read the verse before and after at all times. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found. We know what the Bible says. Enoch was with, he was a man who walked with God and he was not for God took him, right? By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony, that he pleased God. Verse 6, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Uh-huh. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, of course, we could identify. That's the word, identify. We could identify with the things that we can see because we're in the flesh. But God loves those who do not identify with the things they can't. So, who identifies with the things that they can't see because that's him. He is the unseen God. He is the one who... You know, we don't see him in a physical sense that we can identify with him. We have to believe that he is, and that's faith, right? So, it says, but, verse 6, But without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that seek him diligently. Verse 7, By faith Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, Moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is by, how do we get it? Faith. Come on. All right, so I need my pen. All right, so our next scripture verse would be, by faith, or what faith? They that seek God. Hebrews 11, verse 6. All right. Going back into Exodus 32 now. And when the people saw, verse 1, all right. When the people saw, what did they see? Moses delayed to come down. Now, immediately, almost immediately, we go to Matthew 25. The bridegroom delayed his coming. Yeah, we didn't see him yet. We haven't seen him in the flesh yet, have we? Well, oh, oh, literally. Okay. The bridegroom delayed his coming. What did the servant say? He began to beat his master, his um, his the other servants. Going with me into Matthew twenty-five.
Matthew 25, verse 5. Go with me there. Verse 4 to 6. But the wise ones took oil in flasks along with their lamps. So remember, we're not just filled up, but we are filled up till we overflow. All right, so we, we, if we need extra, we have a bottle with oil that we could fill up again, all right? Kind of like when we think that we can, we think that we can't study, we, we think that we could overstudy too much the Bible. No, we can study just enough that we don't run dry. Others who are dry want to drink all the oil from us, but we won't allow it. Matthew 25, verse 4 to 6. But the wise ones took oil in flask along with their lamps. So their lamps are filled, but they're going with extra. Verse 5. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Now let's look at Exodus 32 with the same thing. When the people saw that Moses was delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we know not what has become of him. Let's go back into Matthew 25 now. Verse 5, when the bridegroom was delayed, what happened? They all became drowsy and fell asleep. The word of God tells us that we are to be awake and sober. We are of the day, not the night, all right? So that day would overtake us like a thief. But the Bible says all, not some, all became drowsy and fell asleep. What happened in the Garden of Gethsemane? The same thing. Jesus said, stay with me, stay awake with me one hour, one hour while I pray. And they all fell asleep. Now, verse 6, at midnight, the cry rang out. So now in Exodus, what's happening in Exodus is happening in, in Matthew, right? And what happened in Matthew with, well, he was showing them what the bridegroom would delay and all of that. It happened in the garden of Gethsemane with his very disciples. All right. If the disciples could fall asleep when Jesus was still with them, how much more when he's not seen that we could identify in a physical sense that he's with us? We got to stay prayed up, all right? So in Exodus 32, reading on verse 2, then Aaron came and said unto them, so we might be, okay, we're holding on, we're holding on to Jesus. We're reading our Bible, we're doing our preaching, we're praying, we're going to church, we're worshiping, and then we see Jesus hasn't come. But we're suffering for this thing. So what happens now? This thing called the flesh begins to war with the spirit. What happens? Jesus hasn't come back. You sure this is right? What if what if Jesus was really Satan? And what if this whole thing was a farce? See what the flesh is doing? The flesh is at enmity with God. The world is at enmity with God. So what the flesh begins to do is play with you. Play with your head. You know, like, Jesus isn't coming back. Um, why are you doing what you're doing? Oh, go and enjoy the world a little bit. Lay down your cares. You know, just go relax a little bit. Have a little liquor. Go and drink yourself drunk. Have a little party. Go and have some sex. Enjoy yourself, you know. Partake. What's stopping you? Jesus isn't coming back. And then, so the, 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 the hour is dark. It's not necessarily that we're talking about identifying with darkness, like eyes can see darkness, but we're identifying with the spiritual darkness that has overtaken the world. Everybody seems to be enjoying themselves. 
Listen to this. I hear you, Papa. Everybody seems to be enjoying themselves, right? Everybody's living it up, doing their jobs, whatever, whatever. And they're having, it seems, a full life. Now, here's what he says. As it was in the days of Noah, they were eating and drinking and giving in marriage. And then the flood came and swept them all away. Go with me there. As it was in the days of Noah. So we're holding on to Jesus. We're suffering a little. It's long suffering. No problem. No problem. But he said, as it was in the days of Noah, they were doing something too. So let's go into Matthew 24, 37. Now, this is what the preachers aren't preaching. They're telling people, you know, you came to give life, life more abundantly, so go enjoy. All right. But when the flood came, people were enjoying. Uh-oh. And God was the last thing on their mind. Let's go into Matthew 24. Verse 37. Reading verse 36 to 38. But of that day and hour knows no man, no, not the angels in heaven, but my Father only. Remember when he said, we are children of the day, not the night. So we're not supposed to be falling asleep, but awake and sober for our enemy or our adversary, the devil. He's, he's prowling like a lion seeking whom he can devour. All right. So we're not... We're not uh, not unaware of what's happening. We are very aware of what is happening, all right? So we're not dropping our guard. Instead, we're making sure that we're wearing the armor and that we're sealed up with the spirit, that our lamps are filled and not just, but we're walking with an extra bottle of oil as well, all right? So check it out. Matthew 24, verse 37 and it says, but as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Uh-oh. So you mean where there were some people long-suffering? Who were they? Well, they were working very, very hard. What were they doing? They were building the ark. They were doing what God had called them to do. While the others were drinking and eating and giving in marriage, you know, they were, they were, they were obedient to the Lord. They were, they were focused on what the Lord had called them to do. And what did that bring them? Well, he gave them instructions to build the ark and then they could get into the ark and be saved from the flood. It's kind of like now where Jesus said, get under the blood of the cross, um, the brother of the cross, get under his blood, get under the cross, get in the, under the safety of him. But people aren't doing it. They're doing their own thing, you know, because the preacher said, hey, life and life more abundantly. So drink as you want, do as you want and business as usual. And when the flood comes and sweeps us all away, well, oh, well, hallelujah. No. No. Okay. So, Matthew 24, verse 37. Verse, well, reading verse 38. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Now, let's go all the way back to Exodus 32. And Aaron... Who? The human high priest that we had, Aaron, said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the heirs of your wives and sons and of your daughters and bring them unto me. Aaron. Oh boy. No wonder we have a new high priest and a better one. All right, listen. And all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their heirs and brought them unto Aaron. 
And you know what he told Moses? He threw he threw it into he threw it into the fire and a calf came out. <coughs> Verse four. He received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. Who made it? Okay. So God is showing us something now. So when people seem to not identify with the times like how jesus said you know you can discern the face of the sky but you can't discern the times hypocrites all right when when people cannot identify with the things they cannot see they love to make something that they can see and that is a comfort to them all right all right so what did they do let's read in verse 4 of Exodus 32, he received them and their hand fashioned them with a graving tool, after which he made it a molten cuff. And they said, These be thy gods. What did the Lord say? He's a jealous God. All right, don't go making your gods now. Don't go switching. Listen, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt, this piece of gold and silver had nothing to do with them coming up out of the land of Egypt. And now they have called that thing that was fashioned in the likeness of an animal or a graven image, God. God will not be quiet. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. Oh, this is getting worse. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, tomorrow is a feast to the Lord tomorrow is a feast to the Lord he's not the Lord not the God of heaven and earth who dwells between the cherubim but one that they made all right hold on there and they rose up early on the morrow uh-huh and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Business as usual. See? Go into Matthew 5 now. Um, Matthew 25, verse 5. Verse 4 to 6. And the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. What was Noah and his family doing? They were building the ark. What were the people of um, well of God who did not bow down to the image? What were they doing? They were probably crying and weeping, right? Look what happened. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Now, if all the people were bowing down, it would mean that all fell asleep. All forgot. All have gotten asleep. All have scales. I know you have it. You have it. You taking anything for it? I know you had it. Um, or a puff. Huh? Or a puff. Oh, well, I get it. I buy a bottle. I don't want a bottle. I need to eat fruits. Matthew 25, verse 4 to 6. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried. So Moses is getting something good that God has given to the children of Israel. What is it? Tablets of stone with his very finger. He wrote, telling them what he loves and what he doesn't love. Jesus is now going away that his people could receive the Holy Spirit. But they're not going to see Jesus. And this is the problem that we're facing. Because the flesh tends to identify with what it can see. And it doesn't like to not have something to see because it is uncomfortable. All right? All right. Going, let's read in Matthew 25, 5. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. They fell asleep. They stop believing. They stop looking up. They stop looking for Christ to come. They went their own ways. 
made their own gods, went into other religions, did what they want, how they want, when they wanted, and they said, well, he isn't coming. Not right now anyway. If he's coming, he's probably coming next 300 years, so I better live my life because it's just one life that I have, so I'm going to live my life. All right, reading onwards. Verse 6, at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Oh, boy. Go out, go ye out to meet him. Now, let's go into Garden of Gethsemane. When Jesus was praying and he said, Y'all stay awake and pray with me. Yeah? Why? So that you won't be tempted. Because the, the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now, if Peter had stayed up and prayed with him, Peter might not have cut off the man's ear. But in the hour of decision, the hour of darkness, the hour of uh, trial, per se, when they came to arrest Jesus, they were sleeping. He said, wake up, the hour is at hand. So just before, just before they came, and put, they, they bounded him or whatever and took him away like a criminal. He woke up his disciples. He said, wake up. My betrayer is at hand. Remember that? Let's go there. Wake up, my betrayers at hand. Matthew 26, verse 46. Reading verse 45 to 47. Then cometh he to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. What are you, what are you, what are you saying? Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Verse 46, Arise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand, that doth betray me. So which one is it? He says, sleep on now and take your rest. Relax. Sounds sarcastic if you ask me. As he said, the hour is at hand. And what did he say we had to be? Awake and sober, diligent, vigilant, watching to see when the serpents come in for what. You know, he said in his word, he said, they strike the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. And that's exactly what happened. Listen. In verse 46, rise, let us be going. Behold, he's at hand and he that betrays me. Verse 47, while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came and with a great multitude with swords and staffs from the chief priests and elders of the people. Just twelve of them. Thirteen. Thirteen, including Jesus. But of course, Judas would make it thirteen. But now he left, so now it's just twelve. Like the 12 tribes of Israel must rise up. All right, listen. So God says in that hour that he was being betrayed, that midnight hour, the darkest hour, because he said, woe unto that man by whom he's betrayed. All right, it must happen. It must happen. But woe unto that man by whom he's betrayed. Oh boy. All right. So we're going back all the way now into Isaiah. Just a second. We're going back into Isaiah 49, verse 15. And what we heard in the spirit was a mother cannot forget the child of her womb. So while they couldn't see Jesus, they couldn't see Moses, and they couldn't see the groom, had the groom, no, 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 had the groom forgotten, had the groom 
forgotten them? No. Had Moses forgotten them? No. Had Jesus forgotten them? No. What was happening? Well, Moses went to get the tablets of stone. So when they thought, okay, you know, God has abandoned us and the man that he gave us to, to lead us has abandoned us. Wrong. God was preparing something good for them. Second, Jesus, Jesus was, he was not seen with the physical eye, but he had to go that the comforter would come. Amen. If he didn't go away, how could they receive that which they could not see? But now no. All right. So God, when he went away, when he went in a physical sense from their sight, this is why he says, in as much as you, when you did, when I was with you, how much more obedient in my absence. All right. So Jesus, he was sending what? The spirit. He was sending his spirit. He was literally coming to be with us in the spirit. So he was preparing something good. And the bridegroom that we are so anxiously waiting for. The bridegroom is coming, but he's coming for a bride that is looking for him even though she cannot see him. All right. Isaiah 49, 15. Oh, God keeps so hydrated. Isaiah 49, 15. Verse 14 to 16. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. The Lord, can, okay, verse 15. Can a woman forget her nursing child or the child of her womb? Can I get that in the King James Version, please? Can a woman forget her nursing child or lack compassion for the son of her womb? No. Though she may forget, I will not forget you. There are some mothers out there who can do that. Yeah, they will cold-heartedly leave their newborns, their their babies on the alone and have them walk into the streets or they, they abandon them in some garbage or, or, or garbage that they do, right? But God says even though they can, he can't. I hear you, Papa. When Ephraim was a child, I'm going, I'm going there. Well, when Israel was a child, just now, somebody was a child. When Ephraim was a child, I'm writing. He says Hosea somewhere. When Israel was a child, when Ephraim was a child, all right? So we're... That's what I hear. So we're going into Hosea 11, verse 1. Hosea 11, verse 1. So we got to read Hosea 10, last verse. I'm shaking. Why am I shaking? Hosea 10, last verse, which is verse 15. Here's what he says. Shall Bethel, Beth El, the house of the Lord, do unto you because of your great wickedness, so shall Bethel do unto you because of your great wickedness. Wickedness, In a morning shall the king of Israel utterly be cut off. God is getting a new one. Now, Hosea, a scripture verse, Hosea 11, um, verse 1 to 2. When Israel was a child, I loved him. 
and called my son out of Egypt. All right. As they called them, so they went from them. They sacrificed unto Balaam or Balaam and burnt incense to graven images. It just went off their heads. All right. Verse 3 I taught Ephraim how also how to walk, how to go, taking them by the arms, but they knew not that I had healed them. I led them with cords of kindness, with ropes of love. I lifted the yokes from their necks, and I bent down to feed them. Does that sound like love? It does, doesn't it? That is a, that is a, so that they don't go astray, so that they're loved, so that they're kept. You know, God says, he took away the heavy burden, and then they turned back on him. I, okay. So Hosea 11, verse 1 to 3. All right, going on further. Going in, back into, oh no, Isaiah, darn. Isaiah 49, verse 15, King James Version. But Zion said, the Lord is forsaking me, and the Lord has forgotten me. Verse 15, can a woman forget her sucking child? Was she breastfed? No. That she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? No. Yea, they may forget, but I will not forget you. Verse 16. Behold, I have graven thee, hallelujah, upon the palm of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. All right. So it's not just something that I say when we're breaking bread. God has etched us in the palm of his hands. Amen. All right. So that's Isaiah 49 verse 15. All right. So just like a mother can't forget a child, God can't forget Zion. He will not forget her. Okay. So, of course, we know that Israel is both identifiable with the people, the land of Israel, as well as now that the Holy Spirit has been given, spiritual Israel. Going on further. What? Some robot wanting to do some auto trading? No, thank you. What? What? Okay. That's just creepy. Okay, the next one, hear the words of your father and incline your ear to my voice. We're looking at Psalms 45 verse 10. And Proverbs 2, verse 2. Isaiah 55, verse 3. All right, let's go. Psalms 45, 10 first. Verse 9 to 11. The daughters of kings are among your honored women. The queen stands at your right hand, adorned with the goal of offer, or offer, or appear, whatever. Verse 10. Listen, O daughter, observe and incline your ear. Forget your people and your father's house. Verse 11, and the king will desire your beauty. Bow down to him, for he is your Lord. All right. It brings me into Esther, kind of, but hold on. 
Proverbs 2, 2. Proverbs 2, verse 2. Verse 1 to 3. My son, if you accept my words and hide my commandments within you. That's like Esther's uh, loyalty to the king. All right. Esther could have, she could have allowed um, the king to be assassinated or overthrown, however much they were planning to hurt him and destroy the people and, and whatever. She could have been quiet, but she chose not to. Listen, Proverbs 2, verse 2, verse 1 to 3. My son, if you accept my words and hide my commandments within you, Verse 2, if you incline your ear to wisdom, what is wisdom? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. If you incline your ear to wisdom and direct your heart to understanding, what is he saying? If you will allow the fear of the Lord to descend upon you, if you will seek out the Holy One, listen, and, and direct your heart to understanding. Verse 3, if you truly call out to insight and lift your voice to understanding, desire it. All right. Um, Isaiah 55, verse 3. Isaiah 55, verse 3, Proverbs 40, 20. Isaiah 55, verse 3. Give me a second. Isaiah 55 verse 3. Reading verse 2 to 4. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfies not? Hear, hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good and let your soul delight itself in fatness verse 3 what 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 is you want us to eat the word verse 3 incline your ear and come unto me hear and your soul shall live and i will make an everlasting covenant with you even the sure mercies of david verse 4 behold I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader, a commander to the people. All right. So again, he's guiding us. All right. He says, this is good. This is bad. This is good. This is bad. Just like what he said in Hosea, the same thing. Proverbs 4, verse 20. This was the first one that, well, when he gave the scripture verse, was the first one I thought of. We'll just go find it ourselves. Verse 19. Now look what he tells us. But the way of the wicked is like the darkest gloom. They do not know what makes them stumble. 
Why? It's like if a blind man was walking in the darkness and he doesn't know, he's just bumping into things and tripping over things. The obstacles, the, uh, the distractions. Yeah, you're just walking blindly, whatever, whatever, whatever. You're not testing it by the word. You don't know what is good, what is bad. So you're just taking everything, kind of like, listen. Verse 4 of, well, um, verse 19 of chapter 4. But the way of the wicked is like the darkest gloom. They do not know what makes them stumble. Verse 20. My son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Verse 21, do not lose sight of them. Keep them within your heart. All right. So he says to listen to what he says. Why? Because he's father. Because he knows exactly what is good for us and what is not good for us. God is the one in control. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He knew what was there. He knows what's coming. And he knows what is, what, well, what's happening even now. He knows. So he's looking at the beginning, the end, and the middle. And he's just guiding us along in the way that is right. All right. Listen to that voice that says, this is the way. Walk in it. So... If we didn't have his guide, if we didn't have him as the mighty counselor and the guide of our souls, where would we be? Fumbling in the dark. We would be, we would be perishing. That's where we'd be. All of us were perishing before Jesus. Now... They were indeed sorrowful in their hearts. We're going to... The supper, the last supper table somewhere. Oh. We're also, okay, give me a second. Going into Matthew 26. All right, here we go. Matthew 26, verse 21 to 23. And as they did eat, he said, Verily, I say unto you, that, some, that one of you shall betray me. Verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Verse 22. And they were exceedingly sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? Verse 23, And he answered and said, He that dips his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. Now, the Bible tells us that all of us like sheep have gone astray, each one to his own way. Amen? All of us, like sheep, has gone astray. Each one his own way. We're going to Isaiah. So who would this be? We, you think we would be sorrowful? We would hope that we're sorrowful. We would hope that we are... Um, sorry for the sins that we do or we commit we would hope that we're sorry for the the things that nailed jesus to the cross and made him suffer some aren't give me a second isaiah 53 reading verse 5 to 7 but he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. 
Verse 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. Remember when he said, not one is righteous. No, not one. He said, all the righteousness has filthy rags before him, so you could be the holy of holies. And the holiest this and the holiest that. You're still a sinner. All right? All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought at... He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shares is dumb. He did not open his mouth so that we are not condemned. Now, why is he telling us this? Because he said they were sorrowful in their hearts. What if now we were sitting at the last supper table with him and he said, one of you will betray me and the Bible tells us that each one of them were saying is it I is it I is it I why because all our righteousness are as filthy rags before God and once we're in the flesh we're going to sin against him so there's always a possibility all right this is why we have to be led by the Spirit of God and not the flesh of God. Because as many as are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. So each one might have had a tiny fear inside saying, I wonder if it's me. Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? May we not be one of those. Amen. Give me a second. Matthew 26. All right. And Isaiah 53. Verse 6. All right. Going on further. He says, where I'm going, you cannot come. But it is expedient for me to go. So, again, well, why why would he even, when all of us are, are filthy pigs in his sight, why would he die for us? Why would he take the punishment for us? Why would Father do that? Because he loves us. Yeah. Now, he's a loving Father. He says, I'm not going to just you know, give you the tablets of stone and leave you to do what I know you can't do by yourself. He says, I'm coming. I'm going to send you help. Of course, if he said he was coming back, then they'd be like, okay. But then they wouldn't have understood because the Holy Spirit wasn't given. Now, go with me to John 8, 21. He's helping me here. He's turning my pages. Mm. It's kind of cool because I don't have patience right now. John 8, 21, reading verse 20 to 22. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple. And no man laid hands on him. For his hour was not yet come. So whoever wanted to lay hands on him, angels of heaven were withholding them. Yep. Now it says his hour was not yet come. So they couldn't arrest him yet. Listen, verse 21. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whether I go, you cannot come. Where I'm going, you can't come. Verse 22. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he said, Where I go, you cannot come. See, they're thinking in, this, in this, the physical instead of the spiritual. 
that insight is not being given yet. Now, we're going another one in John 13, 33. John 13, 33, reading verse 32 to 34. And it says, if God, if God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself, in himself, and shall straight away glorify him. Verse 33, little children. Listen to how he's speaking now. Little children, yet a little while I'm with you. You shall seek me. And as I said unto the Jews, where I go, you cannot come. So now I say to you, verse 34, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye have also loved one another. All right. So he says, where you're going, where I'm going, you can't come. Now, remember, they, been, they had Jesus with them all the time. They ate with him, drank with him, laughed with him listen to his parables, saw miracles. And now, wherever he was, they slept under a tree, whatever, on the hillside, or whatever, in a cave. Now, now he's going. <clears throat> what do you mean you're going? But you called me to follow. Please don't go. It's like a little child when they're very attached to their parents and it's the first day of school and the parent is leaving that child. That child will cry. That child will be sorrowful. But eventually, he becomes accustomed, or she, to the parent not being there. But knowing that they'll see them again at a certain time. Now, of course, this is like a daily thing. But, you know, you get what I'm talking about. Where the Lord has gone back to heaven on the throne in that we cannot see him. Just like he was before he came. But he's still around us. But now we know how to seek him. We know how to incline our ear to his voice. Amen. So. Just give me a second. John 13 verse 32. All right. So we're looking at. It is expedient that I go away. Or the comforter will come. Alright? So he's talking with them like little children. Because they're like the sheep and he is the shepherd. They are the sheep and he's the shepherd. Just like us. They're like little children who's looking at daddy. And daddy's saying, I gotta go away for a little while. But I'm coming back, okay? John... 16 verse 7 all right so now could you imagine like little children crying sorrowful you know sad he's going he's really going but 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 i left my this to follow and i left my that to follow but but what what, what would i do now they found their identity with him in that he was with them he was the leader they were following now they have to find their identity in him so everything that he taught everything that he showed it has to be welcomed in now because it's coming by the fire of the holy spirit amen so check this out in john 16 verse 6 to 8 instead your hearts are filled with sorrow because i've told you these things Verse 7, but I tell you the truth, it is for your benefit that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. The one who intercedes for us with groanings that we could not mention. Listen, but if I go, he will come to you. And then when he comes, what would he do? He will convict the world in regard to sin righteousness and judgment so he's coming okay so you're going but you're leaving someone with us 
Of course, that's who they knew him as, the Holy Spirit, until they got the revelation. All right? What did I say there? The lost part. Ah, I forgot. All right. He's going to give a back. He'll give a back. He always gives a back. Okay, and I'm trying to remember. No, okay. So the next, okay, so he says, he's telling them, hey, I'm, I'm going. I, you can't come there because I came from somewhere that you wouldn't, you wouldn't understand right now. But let all things be fulfilled and let the gift of the comforter be given. Let the gift of the teacher be given or the, the, the Holy Spirit then, which is the gift. Every time I mention the gift, I want to say the Holy Spirit. And then you'll understand all things. And then you'll see how the flesh is overcome by the spirit. All right? Now listen. He said, when he comes, he'll convict the world. So why is he telling them this now? Because they need to know that when that mighty wind comes rushing into that room, that things are going to be real. They're going to see things the way he saw things. They're going to know what's right and wrong, what is, you know, good and bad, whatever. All right, let's go back in. He said, it's expedient that I go. I don't want to go, but I have to go. Why? Because God loves to be with his children. He doesn't love to see us sorrowful. He doesn't like to see us sad and hurting. He loves to see us happy and he loves to be with us. That is why he came to get us. All right. He had Adam and Eve in the garden, but they were kicked out of the garden because they did something wrong. If they had eaten from the tree of everlasting life, they would have been destroyed. They would have remained just the way that they were and destroyed. All right. Now, listen, they would have become evil forever. Kind of like Satan now. That he's fallen all right we're going into the adoption by the spirit unto whom we cry Abba father and we're going into Romans 8 15 because as many as are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God amen so we're looking at verse 14 to 16 for as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God verse 15 for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of adoption Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Verse 16, the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So now we know that the breath of life is God's spirit in us. But now he's given us the gift of his spirit double as teacher and comforter and guide and the light and power and authority and every good thing else that comes from him amen so now he says he says you don't have to fear you don't you didn't get the spirit of bondage but you got the spirit of freedom hallelujah of adoption you were once orphans but now i'm no longer the slave of fear i am a child of god okay so he says we've received the spirit of adoption there was a court and the papers were signed and the file was given and it said hand over all parental rights to jesus yay okay so then we were going home where who are we going home with when a child is adopted who does he go with when the court grants the parents he goes with the parents all right who adopted him so we are adopted. The price was paid in full by the blood of him because he so loves us. And we're going home with him. Hallelujah. That's something to rejoice. Amen. All right. So that's Romans 8, 15. The next one. So remember what I just said though, power and authority? That's our next one. Power and authority I give unto you. 
Yes, Lord. So now that he's adopted us, we're not our own. We're not even whoever claimed us. Who claimed us? Satan had claimed us. You know why? We were the offspring of Adam and Eve. Now we are heirs to the throne. Listen, Luke 10, 19, please. At the mention of his name, heaven will bow and earth, earth will tremble. Luke 10, 19. You are the wonderful God. Wonderful. Luke 10, 19. Verse 18 to 20. So he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. That's right. He was kicked out. And remember Revelations 12? And then remember John 12, verse 30, 30 to 32? All right, listen. He said, I saw Satan kicked out. I'm sorry. <laughs> I saw Satan falling like lightning from heaven. I saw Satan kicked out. That was nice. Verse 19. See, I have given you authority. Hallelujah. To tread on snakes and scorpions. So even though Satan was kicked out, he was overcome in heaven. And even though he's come down to the earth having a great wrath. We got to read that. I hear you. Revelations 12. At the mention of your name, angels will bow. Listen. Okay, so he said... Reading Revelations 12, verse 10 onwards. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation. Yes, redemption for our souls. Come on. Strength. Because when we're weak, it's then we're strong. And the kingdom of our God. Hallelujah. Satan's little plan has been squashed. And the power of his Christ. Hallelujah. And for the accuser of our brethren is cast down yes he was our daddy jesus dealt with him hallelujah michael and the angels fought and there was found no place in heaven for them hallelujah listen satan and his legion was cast down come on we're reading which accused them before god day and night what was he trying to do he was trying he's like the snatchy one the one the snitch who would go and say dad look at what they're doing look look see they're doing the same thing like Adam and Eve. They're betraying you. But he was overcome. Hallelujah. And verse 11. And they overcame him. Who? We overcame who? Satan. By the blood of the Lamb. Our Father. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. And by the word of their testimony. Yes, it is of faith. Hallelujah. We stand in this very spirit of Christ. Listen. And they love not their lives till the death. Hallelujah. Verse 12 of Revelations 12. Therefore rejoice. Hallelujah. Ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and the seas. We still rejoice. Hallelujah. Listen to what he says. For the devil is come down. Oh, he has. He don't know what he came to. He came to trouble because we have authority and power. All right. For the devil is come down to you. Having great wrath. Because he knows that he has but a short time. We're going to make it shorter. Because we're going to kick his butt all over this earth. Alright? Listen. And when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth. He persecuted the woman which had brought forth the man child. What does he hate? He hates the thing that brought deliverance to the earth mary was a chosen vessel of god amen but she was a human she was something god made remember satan hates all men made in the likeness and image of god now the woman here is not mary the woman is the church and the man child is the holy spirit the church that has overcome the system of the world the uh all the tricks of the devil by the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
we overcome him by the power that was given unto us so what does he come to do he's come to persecute the church that brought forth the man child the male child all right i see i have two things here two things why do i have two things all right so in luke not in luke 10 verse 19 says see i've given you authority to tread on satan on snake he's a snake and scorpions he's a poisonous thing he likes to infect he's infectious venomous you got to be careful you got to sift what you hear listen by what the word and over the power of the enemy that's right god has already given it to us if god is for us then who can be against us nothing will harm you hallelujah listen nevertheless verse 20 do not rejoice that the spirits submit unto you. Don't rejoice that the demons, they, they, they bow, they have to bow at the name of Jesus. But what? Rejoice that your names, hallelujah, is written in the Lamb's book of life in heaven. Hallelujah. All right. So we're stopping here today. Amen. We'll stop here today and we'll continue. We'll continue our scripture page. Um, I don't lay till tomorrow whenever I get a good connection. <sighs> Pray for me. Keep me in your prayer. Amen. Devil's not happy with what I'm doing. But if he wants to follow me around, I like becoming fire. So we just squash his head. Amen. And drag him under the foot. Yes. That's your place, Satan. Know your place in Jesus' name. All right. So, let's thank the Lord for his word. Amen. And we'll continue later. All right. Glory to God. Father, we praise you. We adore you. We worship you, Lord. Father, we just thank you for expounding the scriptures onto us, Father. For teaching us all the things that you want us to know, Lord God. For... Um, just showing us how loving you are, a father you are. And you haven't left us abandoned here as you cast down Satan. You haven't left us abandoned in our sins. And you haven't, sure, haven't left us powerless. You have come to us. Hallelujah. Father, we just bless your name and we thank you, Lord God, for purchasing us, Lord God. We thank you that we are yours, sons and daughters rising up with the fire of you, y'all. Yes, Father, be glorified, be magnified. We love you, Daddy. I love you. In your holy and precious name, Jesus Christ. Hide this word in our hearts that we won't sin against you. Amen and amen. Glory to God. All right. God bless you, beloved. In the holy and precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Share this message if it was good for you. Thank you for being patient with me. Really, the internet. Yeah, and with me. God bless you, beloved.